you may be a creative director in a marketing company or an architect or a copywriter your job is to be creative you may think that standards and discipline are a hindrance to your creative juice today we are telling four stories of two painters a composer and an architect whose craft have gained historical recognitions. Underpinning the beauty of their art is the absolute discipline in their praxis. Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenu from IMPI. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. There was a man that was called an artistic prodigy very early on in his life. He only wanted to paint and would make it his profession with a few other art forms mixed in. He would wake up every day and follow a very strict regime he had made for himself. You see, he had a passion and an outlook that one day he would be the best artist of his time. Every day ended with three paintings completed. He went through strenuous processes to deconstruct his artworks to their barest shapes and then put them together in a completely different way. If he was so talented, why did he work so hard at what he loved? Well, ask Pablo Picasso when you see him one day, maybe. Being a musician, like all forms of art, demands practice, passion, and consistency. Being born into a family of musicians, this musician went to demonstrate just that. He would often copy and then rework the music of other artists. He pushed himself to go to a prestigious school to learn what his family couldn't teach him and kept pushing himself throughout his life. At that school, he was described as a disciplined, methodical, well-trained teenager, deeply committed to learning his craft. He became persistent on revamping his own works, revisiting and reworking them until he was satisfied. Yet even with him putting a lot of time into revisiting his work, in seven years, he was able to create more music pieces than most composers would only dream of creating in their lifetime. He created groundbreaking paradigm shifts that are still used today and was able to push the boundaries of music with discipline. Pianos playing with thumbs? Unthought of until he came along and changed the way people played, not just with the piano, but also inventing equal tempered tuning, which is wired into all forms of electronic instruments worldwide. Strangely enough, he had very little fame and fortune while alive, but today he is recognized as a genius. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Johann Sebastian Bach. Remember there was a time before cameras where everything had to be painted in that moment from what you saw. Well, back then, painting light was quite tricky. This would explain while one artist spent a period of six months painting the exact same structure at varying times of the day and in varying seasons. He wanted to study the play of light and its effect on the structure he chose. He was in a cramped apartment and looked at the same structure every single day. It was impressive he didn't go insane. Yet, eliminating his subject matter and his location, and a whole array of other factors to demotivate an artist and prevent creativity from flowing, he was able to create the impossible at the time. With 10 canvases lined along the window and having painted them simultaneously, he created 30 paintings over that period. Yet this madness did not stop there, as he spent over 30 years painting the way light had an effect on lilies. His friend wrote that he had a strict daily routine of painting, even though painting often tormented him. This great artist is Claude Monet. Architects blend discipline and art, encompassing different styles and ways of thinking. 
One architect set out to change the mold of architecture, blending her hours of creative drawings into structures never thought before. She broke the mold repeatedly, often being met with opposition, as her works often seemed inconceivable and unrealistic, yet blossomed into incredible structures. She stated that her work eventually developed into fluid organization, and this development derived from hours upon hours of hard work and her continually reworking what she had already made. She was the first woman to win the Pritzker Architecture Prize in 2004, and later in 2010, she won the UK's most prestigious architectural award, the Sterling Prize. In an interview, she gives advice to the youth, stating, you have to be very focused and work very hard, but it's not about working hard without knowing what your aim is. You really have to have a goal. The goal post might shift, but you should have a goal. Know what it is that you are trying to find out. This legendary architect is Zaha Hadid. And this is the inspired quote for this episode. Pablo Picasso said, that inspiration comes does not depend on me. The only thing I can do is make sure it catches me working. Isn't this beautiful? Claude Monet would have been inspired to paint Table Mountain and the shifting lights of the Western Cape in South Africa. Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. Send me an email at wwd at mp.solutions. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, let your discipline unlock creativity.